recent Awake Together Summit, we sat down with sleep apnea patients and asked them to discuss their experiences. This is what they told us about their sleep apnea diagnosis. This is Ari Burwald. Before I was diagnosed with sleep apnea, um, I had, as it turns out, many of the telltale signs, emotional dysregulation, uh, depression, anxiety, trouble sleeping, some sort of cognitive issues. At, at a certain point, it became very difficult for me to do the level of math that I could before, just because my brain was not operating at its normal level. So the first sleep study I got uh, put me between moderate and severe. And, you know, in some ways it was kind of depressing to hear, oh no, sleep apnea. But on the other hand, since I'd been kind of drifting aimlessly trying to figure out what was the problem, it was actually very comforting to know that, okay, this, this is a problem, right? This is my problem. So now I can uh, approach it head on. I kind of know the enemy I'm fighting at this point. So that was kind of a relief. This is Karen Wolk. The journey started at the psychiatrist's office in December of 2011, complaining of panic attacks and memory loss and attention problems and being tired all the time. And that led to years of going from doctor to doctor to doctor that my psychiatrist sent me to while trying to manage my symptoms. I did not find out that I had sleep apnea until late 2015. AHI, and the people that know about sleep apnea know what that means, but the apnea hypoapnea index, I had 20.6, so my, I would stop breathing tw an average of 20.6 times an hour, up to 76 seconds at a time, and my oxygen saturation was down to 82%. So that explained my cognitive impairment pretty well. Like if you asked me a question, I wouldn't have been able to answer it because within a couple seconds I would have forgotten what the question was. This is Janice Sternfeld. When I had all the respiratory problems, I finally got convinced that I needed to have a sleep apnea test along with it. My HMO does everything in groups, so when you've had a sleep apnea test, you have to go back in a group and they give you your results. And that graph has a, a line and blue marks mean apnea episodes. And they showed a few where there were blue, 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 and the rest was white. And when you looked at mine, it was all blue except for a few thin lines of white. This is Dr. Joseph Borelli. And you get to the point where you realize that you're, um, you really cannot function, you're a basket case. I sort of reached that point earlier and sought out you know, the healthcare system, and then I said, ultimately, I have to go find the best expert in the world, in my opinion. And that's when I went to Stanford and saw Dr. Guimano. And when he saw me initially, he just said, Dr. Borelli, open your mouth. And he looked at my mouth, he shook his head and took two steps backward, and he said, you've had this sleep disorder your entire life. This is Brian Delaney. And told him the story. Um, he listened and he realized just from me telling him what I was going through that without a doubt I had sleep apnea. And he told me it was probably going to be one of the worst cases. He called up the sleep place and canceled other people and said, okay, this guy needs to get in there because <laughs> there's something wrong with him and it's pretty severe. So Monday I went, found out my sleep apnea was uh, 145 an hour AHI. So it's pretty high. Uh, 145 times an hour, my I stopped breathing. So that's a lot. <laughs> this is Richard Barber. I didn't uh, realize I had sleep apnea. My wife was the one who told me that I did. She would tell me that I would snore and I would deny it. I didn't believe her, you know. Um, and she knew that that was a sign of sleep apnea. So for years and years, she tried to get me to have a sleep study and I just refused. I noticed something finally, because I thought I was sleeping fine. I didn't need a lot of sleep, you know, because you know, I just got up and did what I had to do, whether I felt good or not. But I noticed that I was getting fibromyalgia, leg pain, at night when I would lay down. And I couldn't get comfortable, my legs hurt. I thought, oh, well, it must be related to the sciatic nerve, so I would try to you know, raise my legs up to relieve the pain um, and getting no relief. 
And then I noticed that I was gritting my teeth whenever I was starting to fall asleep. So I said, something's not right. So I finally gave in, had the study done, turned out severe sleep apnea. You know, I would stop breathing for upwards of 20 seconds at a time and had no idea I would do that. So they said, all right, you've got it. For more information, visit our website, sleepapnea.org, the American Sleep Apnea Association.